Good morning, everybody. It's me, Shiloh, Shiloh Fayad, certified transformational life coach, teacher, and mother of four. And we're here today with real lives, real people with Shiloh. And I'm super excited because I've got a fantastic guest on today. Her name's Jen Gallucci, and she lives in Washington. And I've known Jen for a while, but we haven't actually had a real talk in quite a while. And I usually get on with um, my guests before the show and have a bit of a chat with them. And it's been absolutely great catching up with her. And she has lots of fun stuff to tell us and really um, sharing some things from the heart. And you know what I notice is I am noticing that like last week, the my talk, my speaking and my lips are not lining up people. I really don't know what to do about this at this point. I'm here in front of you on live and I can see there's a delay. So I'm going to have to figure this out for next week because I imagine it's driving you nuts as much as it's driving me nuts at this point. And look, we have some guests today watching, some viewers. I see Judy's here today. Hey, Judy. How about, um, I, we're just gonna go for it with the delay. I'm gonna have to figure that out because the first time we did this, we did not have a delay. So let's just go for it anyway. And now I'm excited to bring Jen on. Let's see if I can do this. Here we go, there we are, Jen Gallucci, welcome. Hi. This is so exciting, it's so great to catch up with you before. Can you see the delay as I'm talking? Does it look delayed on your, oh great. No. Well maybe it's just. No, it looks good. Okay, yeah. perfect, I like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, you know, as I said on my first show, I'm not so much about the small talk, which I think you already know. Yes. Well, um, why don't we just start off with a bang? Why don't you start sharing a little bit of what you were telling me beforehand? You know, <clears throat> for me, in my own journey, you know, we were talking about this, some of the most important parts of our lives mm -hmm. can be the parts of our lives that are most uncomfortable. Like, they're the times of our lives where you know, when they're going on, we wish they would just stop. And it sounds to me like you were able to move through a challenging time in your life with quite a bit of grace. So um, if you can tell us a little bit about that challenging time and the, what you did for yourself in terms of that grace and holding that vision, I, would, I think people would love to hear about it, Jen. Okay. Um, so... We were talking about um, my separation and divorce that happened a few years ago. And um, it was something that came along as a shock and surprise um, that I wasn't, I was not prepared for, as is the case often in life. Um, so I had a very clear moment, even though this was something that was really my biggest fear in life, um, was this happening. But in that moment, I had such a sense of um, protection from the universe or source or whatever you want to call it. I just felt very held. And I felt like it was one of those um, I don't know if I really believed in fate beforehand, but it felt like a moment that was just sort of meant to be. And this was my moment to um, to really put everything that I believed in and everything that I was practicing um, really to its test. And um, I, I, got, I guess what I'm trying to say is it was the most clear moment of my life was when this was happening. And I remember just saying, it was very clear what I wanted in my life. And I remember just, I was so clear, I just want to be love and receive love and give love. It was just like love, that's it. And so I was going to have to figure out how to hold that while still going through these other feelings that were much harder. And it was such a loss and such deep grief. And um, 
I know when we we worked together a little bit at this time too. And um, anger was a little bit harder for me to get to, mm -hmm. which I always kind of questioned, but I just sort of went with it. Um, it was such a deep sadness and um, and loss and, and a sense of like, my world just blew up, you know? It's like the tarot card, the tower, like everything just came crashing down around me and there was nothing there. So the biggest thing for me was to really get a sense of, okay, the thing I wanted most uh, of this family life that we had been creating, um, that was just my whole heart and soul, is gone mm -hmm. and I'm gonna need to replace that vision and intention I held so strongly in that arena mm -hmm. um, with a new vision and realize that even though it didn't look the same, what was there <laughs> that I knew was gone, that the intention that was there originally was not gone and that it lived within me still. And so I was gonna need to pull that vision and intention forward into this complete unknown. Wow. And um, yeah, so it I, took- I, I, um, Just hearing you say that, I feel so proud of you, like so proud, like for your strength and your commitment. You know, in terms of my own divorce, it was a, I, you know, I'm gonna swear it was a shit show like a total shit show. I never want to do that again. It was one of the worst experiences of my entire life. And for me, I didn't have that clarity. I didn't have that ability to do what you did, which was create this. You, you took the essence of that vision you had for your family mm -hmm. and you put the essence of that vision to a different space, right? And you still held it, Jen. Mm -hmm. That is some incredible power. Like, some fortitude, some real um, integrity. And, and I, I don't even know. For me, when I was I got divorced, I felt like my life was shattered. Like, like it was like somebody took a mirror and just smashed it into a million pieces. And I remember desperately trying to piece it back like into this perfect mirror so it still looked the same, right? Yeah. It took me a while to realize that I needed to make a new mosaic with those pieces. It had to be something totally different. But I yeah. still didn't have the same grace, I would call it, as yourself moving through that. Because I remember your commitment when you and I worked together mm -hmm. to that being love. And it sounds like you held it. I did. It wasn't easy. <laughs> it was not easy. Um, but I that's how I work. I need to have that vision that I can see and I can live in a little bit, even if I'm not there yet. Mm -hmm. Um, so that I can, I can see myself beyond the pain and suffering or, you know, deep sadness and loss that I was in, cause that was very real, mm -hmm. but I wanted to also be able to see myself outside of that a little bit too. And I, I'm, yeah, and I, I just need this, this piece that inspires me, I guess. That, and to know that there was still something there, that that piece that's me, the essence of me, was going to live forward. And this, all that was, wasn't completely gone, even though it didn't look the same anymore. So um, that wasn't so easy either, because I can get very wrapped up in it being one one my one vision i think a lot of the loss was just losing that original mm -hmm. beautiful intention and vision looking the way it did and yeah. then having to release it yeah and do that in um the most loving and forgiving way that i could which um we talked a little bit before the hardest piece was actually to forgive myself in the end Mm -hmm. um, to not feel like I had failed mm -hmm. and, um, there was still, there's still some of that hanging on even into this new year. And, um, I realized, and I had drawn a card for myself at the new year, um, 
that is the innocence card. Mm. And I was like, yes. And it was all about just giving yourself this new innocence, like a child that, you know, you get to start over, you get to begin again, and you don't need to carry all that with you. you it's, it's okay to release it and to know that you've learned what you need to learn from it and step forward in this lighter way. And that's been really helpful this year because I was still carrying it, even though, um, even though the, the new vision was coming into being and um, a lot of things felt more settled, but yet I was still carrying the weight of it and along with me. Yeah. That was the final piece to release. That's beautiful. That's beautiful because honestly, you know, I've been on my own now for 14 years and I would say there's still parts of me mm -hmm. that have some regrets in how I held that, you know, that, uh, coming apart or mm -hmm. however you want to talk about that in terms of the marriage dissolving. Yeah. And I do have some parts of me that still need to practice forgiveness around that. I mean, mm -hmm. forgiveness, like I think I was telling you earlier, Jen, our first guest on the show and Gracie was talking about her daily forgiveness practice in terms of, you know, working through her food addiction and forgiveness is really a big key to the process of becoming whole and feeling happier and feeling better. Yeah. And it's something that we're, we don't talk a lot about. We don't know about. We, do, we don't really know how to practice it necessarily. Um, because for the most part, this, I would, I'm going to make a hasty generalization, but this society is really run by guilt and shame. Yeah. You know, sort of the predominant emotions out there. And so to mm -hmm. cut yourself some slack and forgive yourself at times seems counter culture almost, right? Yeah. We're taught to just push, push, push and, and, and be as hard on ourselves as possible. And I think that, um, you know, compassion is the hugest piece and, and really like um, gentleness. Mm -hmm. I think that's um, I try to be really gentle with myself mm -hmm. um, and in the same way that I would offer my kids, you know, I want them to be gentle with themselves and um you know, and I and we talk about that's a part of our my language with them is, you know, if they maybe they woke up on the wrong side of the bed or, you know, something happened at school or they didn't get enough sleep. You know, I often will remind them to be gentle with themselves today, you know, because they um, aren't operating from their like strongest place. And so how will you be gentle with yourself? I'll ask them, you know, as they go off to school, because if they didn't get enough sleep or whatever was going on, um, it's just a good reminder, you know, to not be so hard on ourselves. And I, I feel like compassion is similar like that, like softening the distance um, and the boundaries between people um, and between my own self, my heart, you know, getting just softening the edges Absolutely. of my heart yeah and your talk about um boundaries between people or whatever that compassion to mm -hmm. me that ability to be gentle with yourself which is something i talk about in the talks i've been doing and i teach clients all the time mm -hmm. it facilitates connection yes. it definitely facilitates connection with others mm -hmm. the other thing i was going to point out that's so beautiful and brilliant about that intention you set in terms of the way your divorce was going to go and you know coming back to that all the time mm -hmm. is you know some of the things i've learned in terms of neuropsychology and the way the brain works is by you know seeking positivity and holding that intention and making that your focus it really takes you out of that negative mindset and mm -hmm. helps you kind of rewire and set yourself up so that you can notice more of that positivity in your life as yeah. to focusing on the negative you've got this real empowered intentional focus right and so that really in terms of your brain sets mm -hmm. you more of that even though yeah. you might be amidst grieving and a deep sense of loss and sadness yeah uh, positivity there in the background helps mm -hmm. quite a bit to soften the blow in some way yeah it's true um 
And it was helpful too, because um, I sought out a collaborative divorce model too, which was very helpful. And that's the bit, first thing you do in that model is, um, and it's not about the, the two, the couple um, being in perfect collaboration. It's more about your support team and your lawyers and everybody being in collaboration with each other around, you know, so you're not, you're dedicated to not going to the court system. Right. So it's not always, it can be very contentious still between the couple, but um, luckily um, we found our way and it was harder. It's harder than sending someone into battle for you because you show up at the table together and you, you come up with the plans together. And I think, again, it was a harder place to be, but so much richness came out of it. And I knew that in the long run, we had to maintain this connection together to best co-parent our kids. Mm -hmm. And always my kids were and just first mm -hmm. in my vision. Um, even though, you know, that I wasn't always in a place of, you know, oh, it's this all just great. I just love all of this. You know, I didn't. It was not great at all. And it was hard to show up to that table and um, communicate across from each other around this particular piece. And, you know, it brought it all back up again and wasn't easy, but I knew that um, ultimately it would establish the most connection for us to move forward. And, um, and that it, and it does usually do that. So that was another part of it, but another part of having to, um, soften and surrender a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, I guess this is something I said to the man I was married to, you know, whether we like it or not, we're family, like yes. we family forever. Absolutely. So there's really no way yeah. of getting around trying to make this show work now. And he and I and his new partner do an excellent job mm -hmm. of really holding space for our kids. And yeah. my, my oldest daughter always talks like, well, my parents, she tells her friends, my parents had a fairy tale divorce. Like we do, you know, major events together. They, we have like a family, ch like I message chat, you know? So, and yeah. that's, that it's not that it's been easy. I mean, yeah. but it's, it's a commitment to a higher, mm -hmm. like a higher vision of what needs to happen because there's children, especially because there's children involved and, mm -hmm. you know, every parent is important. Yeah, and I just saw um, flash across the screen. Surrender is key. Somebody just wrote that. Um, and I'd say, you know, with commitment um, comes surrender. I feel like those two things go hand in hand for me um, because we commit to what we want and like why we want it. But then we have to surrender to how it's going to come and when. Right. You know, so I feel like uh, I hold really tight to this this vision of what I want, but I don't I then I let it go because usually it will be even more aligned and um, just more authentic and true to me the way that it plays. If I can step back a little bit, you know, and just sort of let it happen knowing that I'm still committed. I'm still going to move in that direction. I tell my clients that a lot too. Like you just, you, you know, you have, you have that peace that you really long for that desire or dream. And uh, we can take the steps towards it. And then, but there has to be that little bit of surrendering and softening and, and kind of coming back for a bigger view yeah. to see how it's actually going to play out and just getting out of your own way. Yes, like trusting in the process. Yeah. You know, really trusting the process. You've set this sort of intention, and it may look exactly the way you think it does, or most likely it won't. It won't. But it yeah. Just as good or better. Or better. Yeah. A lot of times, so much better. And um, and I think that's another piece of um, similar to that moment of clarity and connection to source that happened um, when we were separating. It's, it feels like that, 
Um, let's let's. I'm going to interrupt you here because we don't have a ton of time left. But yeah. I want I want to hear a little bit more about this connection to source piece. This isn't something that I talk about very often in terms of my talks. I don't bring it up on this show, but for me, it is a key component in a happy existence on this planet. Now, people can have any sort of belief they want. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I grew up Jehovah's Witness. I'm no longer Jehovah's Witness. I am glad. And so for all the Jehovah's Witnesses watching this, if that's a fit for you, great. It just wasn't a fit for me. Okay. Just to be very clear about that. Mm -hmm. At that point, I completely abandoned any thought of God existing and through my own personal journey, came up with my own version of a higher power. And so, like you say, source, like some sort of connection with something bigger than myself, right? Some people use nature, some people might use music. For me, it's sort of the intelligence that flows through all of creation that also resides inside myself. Yes. That's sort of like as easy as I can explain it at this point. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. But I want to talk a little bit what you're talking about in terms of this connection with source. Like, what is that for you? How, I, how like, what, yeah, what, what do you mean? Um, similar to what you just said, I feel like I connect to it as a creative source that, um, you know, creates everything and the creation of our world as well as it runs through each of us. And when I am connected to my creativity and allow that to, um, to kind of run the show in a way, you know, to to make sure that it's there, that I'm not in this place of rigidity and my to-do list, and, but that I'm allowing that in. And I think it goes back to love again. So I often, when I feel like I come out of alignment or out of connection with source, I come back to what do I love? And um, I really, I really feel like if you follow what you truly love, you are on your path. You are, you know, that is, that is it. That is following um, and connecting to source. Um, Great. You know, this is simple. I like this because all the viewers can do it. What yeah. do I love? Yes. What you love. Yes. And don't, you know, and you, so then you kind of have to let go of the shoulds and well, but you know, no one else is doing that or, um, but you know, my neighbor and all the moms at my kid's school is they're all doing this. And, but I really love this and really just following your heart always. Mm -hmm. And often I will ask myself, what would love do? Mm -hmm. And come up, you know, I just wait and hear what that answer is. It might, I might not get an answer right away. Um, but I'll just keep asking myself. And usually our brain loves questions and curiosity yeah. and wonder. And so usually I'll hear an answer at some point. And, um, and sitting in meditation and quiet, finding moments of quiet. Um, I, that a lot during my separation and um, and leading, you know, through the divorce process, I I sat a ton. And whenever I just felt like I was going to, you know, totally lose it, I would sit and I just kept asking for um, for help, really. Um, I found this house asking one night, just fully surrendering to a full moon and the stars up in the sky at our old house. And I just surrendered and said, I don't know, you know, it, give me a sign and um, I will do that. And I surrender fully. And I walked in and opened my computer and my friend whose house this was, was renting it, wanted to know, you know, what she was just sort of offhandly asking, you know, what do people pay for rent, do you think? And I said, oh, <laughs> I'll rent your house. And it was a, per you know, she was so thrilled because she wanted someone who would love her house. And um, so I, I mean, that's maybe feels very simple and like, how could that always happen? But when you really surrender 
Completely. I think miracles can happen like that. I hear those kinds of stories all the time. Most recent one, a friend of mine had been trying to have a child for a very long time. And finally, it was just like, you know what? That's it. I'm done. And then she got pregnant. Mm -hmm. That one I hear often. I don't know. Probably you have to. But yes. Yeah. Yeah. I hear often. Thank you. I keep getting it's so cute. My nephew keeps trying to FaceTime me. I see here he's seven. It's so cute. Aww. If you hear the ding, that's what's happening. He keeps trying to FaceTime me over here. I already talked to him once this morning. So it's cute. It's adorable. Very I love him. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if I answered your question. Oh, I think the love, love and yes. meditation. Yes. Yeah, I love all this. Uh, so just to recap a little bit. You know, talking about um, in terms of moving through a big challenging situation, you were able to get that sort of clear intention or clear vision of what you really wanted it to unfold like, and then sort of hold that vision even amidst all the challenge, right? Mm -hmm. And then you also talked about, I can't remember how we got on the topic of, you know, creating that connection. I don't remember what we're saying about being vulnerable or I don't remember talking about oh. something. The right forgiveness now. and compassion piece. Right. Yes. Yourself. Okay, great. So being gentle with yourself, creating the connection. Yes. And then talking about this connection to source, this creative force. And yeah. getting into it by virtue of you really staying connected to love, doing what you love. And when you're stuck, asking what would love do. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, great tips. Mm -hmm. I love it, Jen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. how can people get a hold of you? Like, let's say people like watch this and they're like, I love Jen Gallucci. <laughs> so much time with her. How can I find her? What can we do together? Maybe they have a creative project they want to do with you. What? How do people find you, Jen? Uh, my website, which is jengalucci.com. Okay, let me try to write this down here. Okay. Um. Oh, this. There we go, and I'll hide our names, or maybe it'll come. Oh, look, there it is. Oh, you can't, you can't see it on your end. Can you see it on your end? I can see it. Yep. There we That's go. Right. Jenny, com. It's all spelled correctly, right? Yep. Okay, and great. then um, Facebook. Okay. I have um, my Facebook page, and then a Jen Gallucci Life Coach page. Okay. And then I'm also on Instagram as well. Okay, great. Yeah. I love this. This has been so exciting. I'm so happy that we got a chance to reconnect and stay on. So Yay. we can talk a little bit after I end the broadcast. And so just to recap, people, you've been watching Real Lives, Real People with Shiloh. I would love to hear from you. You can either contact me on Facebook, much like Jen, just through my own self, or I also have a couple pages. There's Plan for Joy, and then there's my other page, Radical Wondering, which I haven't, I've kind of had Radical Wondering sleeping for a while, people, but I think it's going to wake up. And you can also check out my website at planforjoy.com. But thank you to everybody who is watching. Um, I'm excited for next week. I do believe I have Mariana on next week. If you're still watching, Mariana, can you type in a yes? Is that you that's on next week on July 2nd, I think? Is that you? Or maybe it's not you. Is it you? Um, I can't. I don't know. It could be Mariana. It could be my friend Cynthia. I think it's maybe Cynthia, actually. Because I think I made a mistake earlier and thought we were talking on the 1st of July. So I bumped Mariana forward a week. Anyway, I'll let you know over Facebook. But thanks again for joining us. Thanks to the viewers. Oh, she's saying yes. So maybe it is her. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys again next week. And Jen will talk after I end this. Have a great Sunday. Thank you. This is a little slow to end. I click end and now I click it again. There we go.